following is a non-profit fan-based product. Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT are all owned by Funimation, Toei Animation, Fuji TV, and Akira Toriyama. Please support the official release. Oh my god, we're actually doing another top 10 video. And just in time for Dragon Ball Z, Fakatsu no F to hit theaters this month in Japan. The movie won't be properly translated here until this summer, but the dawn of a new age of Dragon Ball has me a little nostalgic for the classic anime series, and so we here at Random Tens decided to change it up a bit. There's always going to be Nintendo and Amiibo stuff on this channel, but we both absolutely love the Dragon Ball Z series, and figured if we were ever going to make a top 10 on the series, now's the time. Included with each character, we'll also note their best moment and power up if they have one, in order to spice up the list a bit. And remember, we're just focusing on Z here. No Super Saiyan 4 or King Piccolo, unfortunately. So, without any more time spent powering up the spirit bomb, here's a look at our top 10 best Dragon Ball Z characters. And yes, we friggin' love Abridged just as much as you do. Number 10. When Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods was revealed, we here at Random Tens weren't too sure what to think. Sure, it had been almost 10 years since any real new piece of canon DBZ material had been released, but honestly, we weren't expecting much from a long past series. And yet, this movie is now not only the highest grossing Dragon Ball project to date, but also regarded as the best film in the series, and one of the best parts was Beerus. This purple Anubis is the current DBZ universe god of destruction, and one of the only characters that Goku has yet to defeat in battle. Bringing his master Whis and a temper rivaling the Hulk with him to Earth, this god is the catalyst for all of Battle of God's best moments, and the reason for Goku eventually going Super Saiyan God. We haven't yet seen if he has any power-ups, but his best scene is clearly his atmospheric fight with Goku while the Earth hangs in the balance below. All we know is we're happy this feline is back in play in Fakatsu no F, and we really hope Frieza sets him off. Number 9 If this list was about the original Dragon Ball series, you can bet that the heir to the Capsule Corp Empire would be placed much higher. Despite the series taking on a more action-minded tone during Z, it has to be noted that Bulma still has a large part to play, especially during Namek. This spoiled genius is responsible for the Z Fighter's dragon radar, space pods, and of course, the time machine that would forever change the series landscape. Simply put, Bulma was the series tech wizard, and her ingenuity often saved the day, which is not a common thing in a series known for screaming and laser beams. Like Beerus, Bulma has no power-ups or alternate forms, but she does have a ton of standout moments in the show. But unlike the fighters, her best moment is comedic in nature, as she provides Vegeta with his iconic pink shirt, and the argument that follows is truly Toriyama gold. She may not be powerful, but she helped save the world multiple times, and for that, plus giving us another hilarious DBZ moment, she gets number 9. Number 8. I am so sorry to do this. No, I, I really am. Krillin is great. He's hilarious, loyal, the Robin to Goku's Batman, an all-around great guy. But yeah, his best moment, or at least most memorable, is when he's killed by Frieza, thus propelling Goku to be Super Saiyan for the first time in the series. He's got other great moments, like his refusal to destroy Android 18, and his hard-fought battle against Vegeta and Nappa. Trust us. He deserved this spot and had a massive impact on the series as a whole, it's just unfortunately not under the best circumstances is all. With no power-ups to speak of, I think it's best to get to number 7, but yeah, sorry Krillin, I love you, you're the best guy a blonde space monkey could ask for, but the series moved ahead and you just couldn't catch up. Number 6. 
number seven. Finally, we've got a character with the transformation. Although not the best villain in the series, Cell is easily our favorite. He not only represents one of the few horror elements found in DBZ, but he also possesses nearly all of the Z Fighter's best techniques, making him, well, perfect. Okay, not really, but man, as a kid, at times you believed him. The fact that Goku trained for an entire year in the hyperbolic time chamber and still couldn't beat this monster is a testament to the fear he struck into every child watching and the characters themselves. He was as strong as Frieza, yet arrogant as Vegeta, and loved to toy with his opponents. In terms of his best form, it had to be Perfect Cell. Not because he's the most powerful, but because of how cruel and punishing he is in this form, while still being an absolute ass to all of his opponents. He's like a sociopathic Spider-Man, and we love it. His best moment has to be once he finally reaches his goal and absorbs both androids as everyone looks on in terror. For being perfectly diabolical, we have to give Dr. Giro's prized creation number seven on this list. Number six. The star of the latest Dragon Ball Z movie and worst timekeeper in anime history takes the number six spot and just eclipses Cell as the series number one villain. So why did Frieza beat out Cell even though Cell is our personal favorite villain? Well, simple. Frieza is essentially the emperor to Vegeta's Darth Vader. He's brought up during the Saiyan arc and for the next 100 or so episodes is the root of all evil. There's a reason this is the villain they're bringing back to theaters next month, and for good reason. He's not just a villain, Frieza is an anarchistic tyrant who feeds on the oppression of billions and has been doing so for decades by the time he faces off with Goku on Namek. There's just a background and a presence that this character inspires and you really get to feel the sense of desperation watching Vegeta, our villain from the previous saga, cower in fear at his very mention. And unlike Cell, this alien feels very human as Goku beats him and it's revealed that under all of his regality, he's really just a bully and a coward who blows up the entire planet because he can't stand to lose. We're not exactly massive fans of his new golden look featured in the upcoming film, as it's our opinion that his best form is his clean looking final form as it shows his true menace in a minimalist and creepy sort of way. In terms of best moments, Frieza's has to be the comeuppance he gets when he uses his last few remnants of power to curse Goku as he accidentally bicuspids himself on planet Namek. The fact is that Frieza is hands down DBZ's most important villain, and only a filthy simian freak would think otherwise. Number 5 Yes, another hero, and our first Saiyan on the list. And yeah, you guys should get used to that, but for now, let's focus on that other hero of time, Future Trunks. Considering this is a character who only lasts for one main saga, you'd think that he'd have to be pretty special to make it this high on the list. Well, not only does FT have the debatably best special in the anime, he also introduces himself by killing a newly rebuilt Frieza and his father like they were mice in a trap. Oh, and he's the second Super Saiyan we meet in the series, and that was back when that still meant a lot. He also has a sword, which is pretty cool too I'm told. Beyond Tapian's blade though, Trunks stands out for two reasons. His time traveling escapades and the characterization he faces dealing with his prideful father through the saga. It's pretty incredible how much depth this character has considering his short time as a Z fighter. And even more amazing is his compassion and heart considering who his dad is. His most notable form is his third grade Super Saiyan, aka the slow bulky one he fights perfect cell in and he almost wins. This is notable as this form is kind of attributed to Future Trunks as he is the only Z warrior to hold his own in it, although he eventually becomes far too slow and loses the battle. And his best moment takes place in the history of Trunks special when he ascends Super Saiyan for the first time after witnessing Gohan's death at the hands of the androids. This scene will give you goosebumps and is easily the second best transformation scene in the entire series. And that's what makes this short-lived character our number five pick. Number 4! Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Much like Bulma, if we were including the original series, Piccolo could be a spot or two higher on this list. But unfortunately, another anti-hero kind of overtook him as the series progressed. However, even with that being said, Piccolo is still one of the toughest characters by the end of the series, and is also one of the few to hold his own, even when everyone else seemed to be a Saiyan. A formidable rival turned hero, the Namekian fighter is notable for being Gohan's true mentor, despite his initial hesitance. The way in which this character is able to not only train, but grow to love his most hated enemy's offspring through the duration of the first few arcs is fantastic writing and a true testament to Toriyama's ability as an author. His most memorable form is his super Namek fusion with Kami during the Cell Saga, as it's really his only one of note, and although it's very early on in the series, his defining moment is when he dies protecting Gohan during the battle with the Saiyans. This sacrificial act cemented the character's growth in terms of story, but also in fans' hearts, and we've all had a soft spot for our favorite Namekian ever since. Number 3 Once again, we have to state that this isn't a list of our favorite DBZ characters, but rather who we feel are the best written and executed in terms of the story, and despite being DBZ incarnate, Goku simply isn't its best character. Yes, he saves the world more than anyone, and yes, his optimism and protective nature are endearing, and yes, he's literally the standard for almost every current shonen manga protagonist going, but in terms of this list, Goku is just a bit too vanilla. He's an incredible fighter with an incredible heart, but a lot of the times he's either too injured or too dead to even make a difference, and usually he's in these states during the times when our characters undergo the most change. In terms of what the series has done for us and anime in general, Goku has to be in the top 3, but we can't in all good consciousness call him the best character in the series because he really doesn't change too much. Although he's the only character on this list capable of going Super Saiyan 3, we're obviously going to choose his initial Super Saiyan transformation on Namek as his best. That rage, that electricity, that speech. This is the best transformation in the series, and the culmination of an ancient prophecy that put our protagonist in the role of universal hero. Before Super Saiyan became a child's plaything, Goku was the epitome of power, and along with this being his best transformation, Goku going Super Saiyan also happens to be our choice for the character's most iconic moment. This fight and his battle with Vegeta will always stand out as two of the show's top five moments, but sadly, due to his frequent absence and lack of development, Goku only makes number three on this list of top ten best characters. Although, speaking of Vegeta... Number two! How do we pick one definitive moment? This character goes through so much change and so much humility that deciding on one is almost as torturous as traveling with Nappa. I mean, do we go with his fight against Goku during the Saiyan Saga? Or is it his monologue about the Saiyan race's massacre he gives to Goku after being defeated by Frieza that stands out the most? Well, as great as those are, for many people it'll always be his final attack in the Buu Saga that holds the title as Jeet's greatest triumph. This scene is very similar to Piccolo's redemption as Vegeta contemplates all of the friends he's made, the true meaning of being proud, and of course, the impact having a family and settling on Earth has had on his development from Earth's fearsome antagonist to its final hope against the unstoppable Majin Buu, and honestly, it's crazy how touching this scene is despite it taking place in a kid's story. Usually in Dragon Ball, most people are either Team Goku or Team Vegeta, as the two represent very different ideals of what it means to have power. We here at Random Tens are actually more on board with Team Goku, but it can't be overstated that Vegeta as a character at least, is the more interesting of the two. He's born into arrogance and power and then loses everything, and instead of giving up, he pushes himself every single time to gain what comes naturally to his biggest opponent, and eventually even considers that very opponent one of his greatest friends. If Piccolo's evolution is incredible storytelling, then Vegeta's transition from villain to ally is a genuine masterpiece as far as manga goes. His best transformation is the Majin Super Saiyan 2 form he uses against Goku as the speech he relays to him is also a major highlight for the character. Regardless, if you're on Team Goku or Team Vegeta, the truth is they're as iconic as the Joker and Batman. And like those two foils, these are two characters that need each other to reflect the other's true strengths and shortcomings and they're one of the greatest rivalries portrayed in any media ever. Number 1 
number one. Go, huh? Yeah, it's gonna be hard to top that last testament, but let's give it a try, shall we? You see, everyone loves a story in which a villain learns the error of their ways and eventually turns to the side of good. This is why we put Vegeta at number two on our list. But even better than that is the story of a weakling, someone who always tried their best and always ended up being a nuisance, finally working hard and coming into their own and becoming the hero that we always knew they could be. This is the story of Gohan, specifically Teen Gohan. This half Saiyan hybrid was always hinted at as having some sort of latent power from the very first arc against Raditz, and finally, after hundreds of episodes in the series, he came into his own and finally gained the means to protect all of those who he was previously powerless to save in the past, and in doing so, also gained the confidence of his father. Later on, Gohan got ruined a bit as Goku gained the spotlight during the controversial Buu Saga, but one fact remains. During the climax of the Cell Saga, nobody cared any more about Team Goku or Team Vegeta. It was finally Team Gohan's turn in the spotlight, and to this day, he's the only major character other than Goku to defeat one of the series' main threats. He didn't exactly do it on his own, but during his best moment, the beam struggle with Cell, using one arm by the way, Gohan goes from 0 to 100 real quick, and gave every kid watching both confidence and chills in the process. Here was a 12 year old taking on the most powerful being in the entire universe. And on top of that, he was the first one to reach Super Saiyan 2 in the process, which to this day is still his best form, with Ultimate being a very close second. The truth is Goku, Vegeta, Piccolo, even Future Trunks are all warriors either from birth or through terrible circumstances. But Gohan was relatable as the underpowered weakling through most of the series. So when he finally rises up and overtakes his father as the most powerful character in the entire series, it's well earned to say the least. And that my friends is why we chose Gohan as number one on our list of the best Dragon Ball Z characters of all time. Thank you for watching, and remember this is all just hearsay. Whether you're team this or team that, it shouldn't matter because in the end, DBZ is back with a bang this month. And as a lifelong fan of the series, we can't wait even if their hair turned neon brown. What is up guys? Welcome to End Slate. I'm Stan, the host of Random Tens. Thank you for just listening to my voice for all of those minutes. I hope it didn't get too boring. If you enjoyed that video at all, make sure you click that subscribe button and join the Randy Union today. We have a pretty sweet Twitter over at Random Tens on Twitter.com. And of course, make sure that you leave the top 10 Dragon Ball Z characters you would pick in the comment section below. And let me know what you think or if you have any opinions of the new Dragon Ball Z Fukatsu no F movie. I'm pretty stoked to see it myself. And uh, yeah, guys, check out some of our other stuff, and uh, hope to see you next video. Thanks for tuning in. Next time on Dragon Ball Z.